Hey guys, Joe here again with another really quick setup vid. Today, all we're gonna be doing is adding our recorder to Seabell Mobile so that we can view that remotely from our smartphone. In order to do that, we're gonna to have to have at least either set up the recorder already on port forwarding or P2P. If that's something you haven't done yet, go ahead and check out the links in the video description at the bottom and go ahead and get that taken care of first. Then meet us back here so we can get this process set up and knocked out. So before we get started, as always, we're gonna take a look real quick at our beginning setup checklist. For either P2P or port forwarding, you're going to want to just double check that your recorder is powered on and that you can see your cameras on the local display. You will need to download and install Seabell Mobile, which can be found on the Play Store for Android or the App Store for Apple. For P2P setups, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have accessed your recorder locally and navigate to the NAT menu, which can be found under Network, under the Main Settings menu, and leave the recorder on this screen. For port forwarding setups, you will need your WAN IP and the HTTP port of the unit. Your WAN IP can be found by visiting www.canyouseeme.org from any computer connected to the same network as the recorder. For the HTTP port, you can use the recorder and navigate to the port submenu, found under the network menu, under settings. Write down the WAN IP from canyouseeme.org and the HTTP port from the port page on the recorder. You're also going to need to know the username and password for your recorder in either the P2P or port forwarding setups. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first let's go ahead and open the app. Now, if it's your first time opening the app, you're gonna be greeted by some feature description info. We're just gonna skip over these feature splash screens, tap skip in the upper right hand corner here, and then just tap start at the bottom right here. So the next page is just a typical privacy statement. Feel free to read through it if you wish. And whenever you're ready, just go ahead and then tap agree in the bottom right hand corner. After that, the app should automatically put us on the add device page. Now, if you've already opened the app once before and gone through skipping all those splash screens, it may put you into a blank live view like this that you see here. If this happens, you'll have to manually navigate to the add device page. In order to get there from the blank live view, you will need to tap the three line menu icon in the top left hand corner here. Then you will have to tap server list. You'll see a plus sign in the upper right hand corner. Go ahead and tap the plus sign. Okay, so on the add device screen, you'll notice four fields here. The first field is IP, DDNS, SN. In this field, you're going to input one of two things depending on if you are using P2P or port forwarding. First, if you are using port forwarding, you're going to have to manually type into this field. What you want to type is going to be a combination of the WAN IP, followed by a colon, and then the HTTP port with no spaces. As you can see, we're putting up an example on the screen for you right here. This is just a generic set of numbers that we've chosen and isn't any real IP or ports, just to give you an idea of what this might look like. Now, alternatively, if you have a, or use a DDNS, you can enter that instead of the WAN IP, but you will still need a colon, followed by the port number, added on to the DDNS address that you use. And as you'll see, we're gonna put another example on the screen there of what a DDNS might look like with a port number added to the end of it. Now, if you are using P2P, you can tap here, where this little box is to open up your phone's camera to be used as a QR scanner. We're gonna delete this info out and then tap that box. So you can take that scanner and scan the QR code found on your recorder screen on the NAT menu that you opened earlier. Once scanned, it should automatically take you back to this add device page, but with the data now filled in. Alternatively, if the QR scanner does give you a hard time, you can always tap right here and simply type in the field the serial number you see listed beneath the QR code on your recorder's screen. We're going to go ahead and punch in our serial number now. Okay, so the next field is nickname. And in this field, you can name the recorder anything you like, something like home cameras or office recorder, anything to remind you where this unit is is fine. And it doesn't have to be a piece of information that you use anywhere else. It's only relevant to this phone. The next field is user. And in this field, you should input the username of your recorder. 
Lastly, there's a password field here, and you should put the password for your recorder. Okay, so she, we should now be able to tap preview. We may be taken to another feature splash screen, and if that's the case, just hit OK in the middle of the screen. But after that, you should now be able to successfully see your cameras. All right, so we have finished adding our recorder to Seabell Mobile, and we can now see our cameras remotely from our smartphone. What other kinds of crazy and awesome features can we do with this? Well, to find that out, check out some of the links at the bottom of the page for how to set up messaging, notifications, and do playback, and all sorts of other interesting and awesome options that you can do remotely from your smartphone with Seabell Mobile. Till next time, guys, have a great one and stay safe.